Okay, today I'm gonna show a little bit of a trick um, when it comes to the interruption point navigator and how we may be able to edit edit the, um, the filter externally in another program to access properties that may not be shown from ePlan. So what do I mean by this and what's my goal? My goal is to clearly know all of my interruption points that do not have a pair and not only see this in the message management but see it um, in, a, in the interruption point navigator via filter. Okay, um, so first let's go ahead and have a look at the project. Here you see I have these interruption points and I have this power supply and I, I want to connect the two for sure. Obviously this is a small example so it's very easy to manage but in very large projects uh, we, we may use our um, error checking. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to make a new error check scheme. What we'll do is we'll go look at the class 11 for interruption points and we see message here um, 011002 interruption point without counterpiece. So I want to leverage just this one for the time being, so I'll make a new scheme and we'll just call it interruption, or we'll just name it the name actually, uh, the number of that message. Interruption point without counterpiece, okay. Let's make sure we set that to type of check offline, meaning we have to hit the check button to generate it. Let's apply it to the entire project. And now we see we have some messages. So let's open up the message dialog here. We see our messages, so that's great. And we can open up our um, interruption point navigator. And ideally, what we're looking for is having a filter here that shows this condition, right? Of course, we can do this. We can highlight the message and synchronize selection and do all that. That's fine, but it's a little bit better to have the filter here, in my opinion. So what property will show us that? If we double click on one of these interruption points, we go down to our property table here, and we go down to this property here, messages and message management true. So we add that in. Now what we want to know is the property number, the code of the property. Uh, if you hover over it, it'll show it, but I like to display it um, in a little bit more visible way. Go to um, user display, user interface, and down here, display identifying numbers behind the name. Okay, now if I go back to my interruption point, you can now see the code of the property. Messages and message management 20930. So let's remember that. If we go up to our filter, we're going to hit the three dots and we're going to configure a new scheme. Interruption points with an error message in the message management. Always good to have a description. Um, once you create a new filter, it's going to populate some criteria here. We're going to delete all that. And we're going to hit plus and we're going to look for that property. Remember, it's called messages and message management. And we see it's not available. So in reality, it is available, um, but we have to hard code it in. So I'm going to pick any random property. We'll go with device tag. And again, remember the code 20010. Okay. Now let's go ahead and we saved it. I hit the save button and now we go export this scheme. Okay. Now we're going to import the scheme. Um, before we import it, we need to make a change. So we're going to right click and edit in Notepad++. If you don't have Notepad++, Pad++, it is free. You can download it or you can just edit it in a standard text editor like Notepad. Um, but it's a little bit better Notepad++ for sure. Okay, so here's the property we're after. If you remember our code for device tag, 20010. So what's the other one we're looking for? I already forgot, so let's go back. 20930. So what we can do is replace this Two zero nine three zero, and then we're going to set this as a one so it'll be true. 
Okay, I hit Control S to save it. So that's now a new scheme. And we're gonna go over here, we'll delete. We're gonna delete this one here and then re-import it. Okay, so it has messages and message management. Um, we need to go ahead and click the true checkbox. Notepad++, we did put that one in that particular um, section. I was thinking that was gonna set the value as true, but um, as you can see, it didn't set it for us. So we just set it here. Um, you can always export it again. You can export it again so we get a better idea of what that one does or how to set it as true. Back here, okay. Uh, value, so this is what we were actually after. Value should have been one. Um, but all looks good. You can see that the scheme actually worked out. So go ahead and apply it. And now you'll see that we only show the interruption points with error messages, basically the ones that don't have a pair. Okay, the little red uh, indicator tells us that. So now we can go over here and start dropping them in. Um, here we're gonna place them over here. So let's go here for our channel zero power, drop it in, signal, hit tab to rotate it. Okay, um, for these we can just delete and maybe place some terminals. So let's go over to our devices, terminals, terminal, just place something here for now those okay you can see now we should be able to run our error messages again and delete it'll get rid of all those messages if I just highlight this and hit F5 for refresh now you'll see we've cleared the filter because we have the filter for only um, error messages that are active so if we turn it to not activated now we see everything again